So, so unlike yesterday, where I had a clear view to defend, today I just have a lot of confusion to put forward. Um, but it's an interesting problem. So actually, let me start out with something that isn't a chi-s paradox, but is closely related. So consider the sentence, um, only idiots believe what the Senate says. Should I believe it? Well, if I did, and I knew that I did, and I performed a bit of elementary reasoning, then I'd believe that I was an idiot. So let's assume, for the sake of argument, that only idiots believe that they're idiots. Um, uh, if that's right, then I'd be an idiot to believe this sentence, and so would anybody else, right? I mean, that's uh, plausible, right? So you believe it, right? Well, all right, then by the above reasoning, you're an idiot. All right, so that's the somewhat amusing, I hope, paradox to start off with. Uh, uh, Michael Kai has discussed a, a less amusing puzzle, um, which he argues to have important ramifications for our attitudes towards uh, vague propositions, uh, uh, paradoxical propositions, such as is in the case of the liar paradox. Um, and I think if he's right, it might also have wider bearing to other other kinds of uh, claims, roughly speaking, the claims that one might be kind of vaguely inclined to say, well, it's indeterminate whether they're true. Um, uh, uh, um, th that's, in some broad sense of indeterminacy, that's the kind of thing that he's worried about. And, and he, he, he has a, at first sight, rather strange view about what credence is in, in such sentences should be like. Um, I actually prefer not to put it in terms of indeterminacy for reasons that we will get to, but, but uh, anyway. So Kai has us uh, imagine an agent, Al, um, who is perfect at introspecting his creedal states, He's perfect at aligning his beliefs in accordance with simple logical deductions. His beliefs about his own beliefs are consistent, and he knows that he satisfies these conditions, um, uh, 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 which I'll call gamma. Um, so I mean, of course, now actual agent is going to be like this, and you might worry about the assumptions. but. I'm inclined to try to play along with them at least as far as possible. Um, so uh, uh, we assume such an agent to be logically possible and let this entailment with the subscript gamma mean that y follows from x together with gamma. And um, so now imagine that, that Al considers the following sentence, um, uh, a, a, a sentence uh, gamma, uh, I'll ignore the subscript in reading it for a while anyway. Uh, gamma says, I, I don't believe gamma. So this is somewhat like the idiot paradox that we began with. If you're, if you're, into the issues about the semantic paradoxes. This one is sort of an analog of the liar paradox, whereas the one we began with was sort of an analog of the Curry paradox. Um, uh, but um, anyway, um, so let B of P abbreviate L believes P. So uh, uh, not B of gamma is equivalent to gamma, and B of gamma is equivalent to not gamma. And, and these are really obvious equivalences, so given our assumptions, uh, uh, Al believes that he doesn't believe gamma, 
implies that he believes gamma, and he believes that he believes gamma implies that he believes not gamma. Uh, and the introspective transparency assumptions uh, give you that uh, believes that gamma implies believes that believes that gamma and doesn't believe that gamma implies believes that doesn't believe with gamma. Uh, uh, and the consistency assumption gives believes that not gamma in, in, uh, implies not believes it's gamma. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll remind you of these assumptions as we use them in the R, R human. So the five claims lead to an analog of the liar paradox. Um, so the second transparency assumption was uh, uh, 2B uh, um, doesn't believe that gamma implies believes doesn't believe gamma. And the first one, the first um, logical assumption was believes that it doesn't believe with gamma implies believes that gamma. Putting these together, we get doesn't believe that gamma implies believes that gamma. OK. That's two of our assumptions. Uh, the other transparency assumption, together with the other logical assumption, yield believes that gamma implies believes that not gamma. And if we now add in the consistency assumption to that, we get it believes that gamma implies not believes that gamma. OK, so uh, 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 I've both faced the two important subsidiary conclusions. Um, and in, in classical logic, um, 4 and 6 together entail that everything is entailed by gamma. So the gamma entails that I'm a ham sandwich, for instance. Uh, in other words, the assumptions gamma lead to absurdity, assuming classical logic. All right. Um, now, Kai wants to resist the absurdity of gamma by resisting the hegemony of classical logic. Uh, and uh, the idea is that uh, uh, classical logic is great for our most serious discourse about the world. Uh, Kai doesn't actually say this, but I assume that he would agree. Um, but it's not so obvious that it's generally applicable in all of our less serious discourse. Uh, for instance, in connection with the liar paradox, and Kai thinks that the reasons to suspect it there carry over to the sentence gamma. In fact, he's, he's arguing for a very close analogy between uh, how we treat this belief sentence and, and uh, how we treat a liar sentence. Um, now, how might restricting classicality help? Well, let's look at how debatable features of classical logic are used in driving the conclusion. So we've all already gotten these bold-faced claims four and six, which I've repeated up there on the top line. And I think it's fairly uncontroversial reasoning gets you from four, i.e. doesn't believe gamma implies believes gamma, to four plus doesn't believe gamma implies believes gamma and doesn't believe gamma. Because, I mean, we already have that it implies the first conjunct and its implication of the second conjunct is trivial, right? And similarly, uh, we get from six to six plus. So I think that's fairly uncontroversial. Of course, everything has been controverted by some philosopher or other and there are some who have, but I think that's fairly clear. Um, but now, classically, contradictions explode. Um, in other words, um, uh, 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 contradictions entail everything, for instance, with I'm a ham sandwich. So given 4 plus and 6 plus and that, and again, I, I'm assuming something, namely the transitivity of the implication. But and, and there are people that have questioned that, but let's put them aside. Uh, so we have that 
four double plus um, and six double plus. So not believes that gamma and believes that gamma each imply that I'm a ham sandwich. We now reason by cases to get um, that uh, either believes gamma or doesn't believe gamma implies I'm a ham sandwich. And then we use excluded middle to get I'm a ham sandwich. So the controversial assumptions used here are excluded middle reasoning by cases and explosion. Um, so the options are, well, we could think the problem lies just with explosion um, and conclude that Al does believe gamma and also doesn't believe gamma, but uh, there's no problem because the contradiction doesn't imply that I'm a ham sandwich. Um, um, the other options can be summed up as saying that gamma, uh, oh, I've got two gammas, don't I? Uh, big gamma together with Al believes it's a little gamma um, uh, leads to absurdity, and similarly, uh, big gamma and Al doesn't believe little gamma, uh, but refuse to believe that gamma itself leads to ab absurdity. And the second option actually subsumes both blaming it on reasoning by cases and blaming it on um, excluded middle. Now, in the case of the liar sentence, um, you can do that as well for a simple version of the, of the liar sentence that, 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 that doesn't use truth principles that are just in conditional form. Um, 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 sorry, did, did I have this on an earlier slide? Um, oh, I, I must have skipped a slide. Uh, so I had a slide with a liar paradox, and I uh, put it in a form that didn't involve con conditional uh, uh, assumptions. And for that form, um, uh, you can, can resist the argument by resisting reasoning by cases. Uh, and that's the form analogous to the Chi paradox as I presented it. So for the Chi paradox as I presented it also, um, uh, giving up reasoning by cases would be an option. Kai actually does present it in, in a, with stronger principles than the one that, ones that I gave. And, and so in, in the form that he presents it, restricting reasoning by cases wouldn't be an option. Um, so I, I, I mention this because I think something that I had hoped to get into this talk but didn't end up doing uh, is seeing whether uh, uh, so we'll see that there are some problems that one gets into um, uh, by Kai's, from Kai's own preferred solution, which is to give up excluded middle. A and um, uh, one thing I'd hoped to do was talk about um, uh, whether one might do better uh, giving up reasoning by cases. I, I didn't actually get it to that. And Kai doesn't talk about it, and in a way it's understandable that he doesn't because he sets up the problem with stronger assumptions than I have put forward, uh, and uh, with the stronger assumptions you couldn't use reasoning by, by, by cases to solve it. Anyway, why am I talking about this since I'm not even going to get it to the reasoning by cases option? I don't know. Um, <clears throat> so. Anyway, Kai's, Kai's preferred solution is to restrict excluded middle. And in fact, his, his, his view about the kind of, of logic to use is pretty much exactly the same as the view that I've advocated in, in uh, connection with the uh, uh, semantic paradoxes. Um, um, 
and we'll see why that's important later on. Anyway, um, so, no, I, I seem to keep, um, double clicking here. Um, okay, so, um, so option two B here um, is the is the idea that we restrict the excluded middle, and um, so doing that does get around his initial argument. But as he as he makes clear, this is really just a prelude to the pro puzzle that he really wants to raise, uh, and he thinks that this deeper puzzle has substantial ramifications for our understanding of the attitude we have in other cases where excluded middle might be suspect, like with uh, paradoxical sentences and with vagueness. Um, all right, so let's not skip that. Um, okay, now actually, there are actually two components to Kai's deeper puzzle. He, he, he really only discusses one of them, um, which is what is ideal Al's creedal state regarding this uh, paradoxical sentence. Um, but as we'll see, there's another important one. Um, so on, on, uh, on this aspect of the puzzle, um, both the assumption that he believes it and the assumption that he doesn't lead to absurdity in, in conjunction with his assumptions. Um, so, so what's the alternative view of his state? It can't be that he believes it, can't be that he, he doesn't believe it. What, what is his view? Um, now, since he's an ideal agent, presumably whatever the answer to it applies as well to the question of what state we should be in, when contemplating either the I version or the L version of, of uh, gamma zero. Actually that, oh, I thought I had something qualifying that, but it doesn't seem to have made it in here. Um, so one, one implicit thing that he assumes in his discussion is that there's a unique answer to is that all, all ideal agents should, should be the same. Um, so if we didn't assume that, um, then presumably whatever the answer to it applies, it gives one possible answer to the question of what state we should be in. But, but we ought to be like some ideal agent, I guess is the answer. Anyway, so Kai's answer is that it's indeterminate whether Al believes gamma, and we should be like Al. We should be in a state of it being indeterminate whether we believe gamma. Um, so notice that the view isn't that it's indeterminate whether we should believe gamma. Uh, such an indeterminacy in our obligation doesn't seem very problematic. Rather, the indeterminacy is inside the scope of the should. We should be such that uh, um, it is indeterminate whether we believe it. And um, I'm not really sure how to understand the indeterminate creedal states that Kai recommends. I'm going to be discussing two options for that and I think both of them lead to trouble. He, he, he adopts one option, which I think is the most problematic of the options. There's a less problematic option, but it's problematic too. Um, and, I, and I'm not really sure what, what, what the better thing to say is. Anyway, so that's, the, that's one aspect of, of, of his deeper puzzle. Uh, 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 a related puzzle, I mean, he doesn't really discuss it exactly, so it's, uh, uh, maybe we shouldn't really call it his puzzle. puzzle. 
but it does immediately arise when you start thinking about his, his puzzle and his answer to it. So this is the question of what should I or Al say about the argument that Al is a ham sandwich goes wrong. So Kai does actually say something about this. What he says is that Al should say that the relevant instance of excluded middle fails. But the problem is in figuring out what the word fails means in this context. So it, it can't mean that the instance is untrue. Because if, if Al thought that either B gamma or not B of gamma were untrue, then he would certainly think that its second disjunct was untrue. So um, he would believe its equivalent gamma to be untrue. So he would believe, uh, um, uh, um, so, so, so he wouldn't believe gamma, and we'd be back in paradox. So remember, we get paradox either from the assumption that he believes gamma or from the assumption that he doesn't believe gamma. Uh, and his, his attempt to avoid it is to, is to reject the conclusion that either we believe it or we don't believe it. But if, if we have him not believing it, then, then we, we certainly have it the case that he either believes it or, or doesn't believe it. So, so, so this attempt of, this attempt to fill out what it means to say that the relevant instance of excluded middle fails just uh, doesn't work. So what Al could presumably say is that the problem with the argument is that the assumption that either B gamma or not B gamma uh, and it leads with the acceptable assumptions gamma to absurdity, and therefore uh, I reject the use of that assumption in the argument. Okay, now, here it's important to say reject the use of the assumption in the argument rather than simply reject it, because the latter would presumably require not believing it and therefore not believing the second disjunct, and then we would be back in, in paradox. But so um, it's important to make a distinction between rejecting and rejecting the use of in argument. Um, it doesn't seem to have this problem. For instance, suppose we we think with Kai that we can make sense of the idea of it being indeterminate whether we believe it, uh, then if we were in that state, we would presumably reject uh, the, the uh, uh, use of the assumption in the R argument, even though we didn't reject it. So prima facie, rejecting it for the use in our argument is a better option. Um, but unfortunately, it too leads to a paradox uh, here with a different sentence. So let gamma star be the sentence I or Al reject the use of gamma star in argument. So presumably this marvelous introspector Al can introspect whether he rejects the use of sentences in argument. And so let gamma star uh, again, big gamma star, include this added uh, uh, assumption. And also, uh, we're going to need two further plausible assumptions. First, that whenever Al believes something, he doesn't reject its use in argument. And second, that whenever he believes the negation of something, he does reject its use in argument. All right, well, given these, we can now, God damn. Um, we can now, um, get a paradox. Well, okay. First, first I'll argue that we, we, we need to reject excluded middle for, uh, uh, for 
gamma star, or for R gamma star, which is the same thing. So first of all, rejecting a gamma star should imply belief in rejecting gamma star by the introspective transparency assumption, which should imply belief of gamma star by the nature of gamma star, which should imply doesn't reject gamma star by principle one, um, and, and then similarly down here. So this gives you this by transparency, which gives you this by the nature of gamma star, which gives you this by added assumption two. So we get a paradox in classical logic, but um, the obvious moral at this point would be, okay, so we shouldn't, ex uh, shouldn't, exclude, shouldn't assume excluded middle for our gamma star. Um, and um, so what's wrong with that? Well, the problem is that it presumably means that we, that we reject the use of our gamma star or not our, our gamma star in our argument. That is this. And you can't reject a disjunction for use in argument without rejecting its disjuncts. So we have that reject that reject gamma star. Um, hereby, it's the distinguished rejection from, from rejection rejection for use in our, our, our argument. And I, I actually want to talk about the latter. It's still is a pain to keep saying that. So let me just say reject. But from now on, when I say reject, I mean reject for the use in, in our argument. Um, so we have that R of R gamma star. But then by the definition of gamma star, that means that R, R of gamma star. And so we're back in paradox, right? We saw that that leads to contradiction. So as I say, Kai does not explicitly discuss this paradox. He, he just talked about excluded middle failing. But, um, but once you ask what that means, you get into this paradox. Now, there is a possible solution, which is to stratify the idea of rejection for the use in our argument. So the idea is that when one rejects the use of our gamma star or not our gamma star in the argument, that's re rejection of a different and weaker sort. So what we should really do is use R0 for the first notion of, of rejection and use a notion R1 here. Um, but of course, it's easy to see that this route is going to lead to an infinite hierarchy of rejection levels. It, at least it will if Al's introspective capacities extend to each level. And, and if you read the Kai article, you'll see that he basically wants to keep extending the, the, the transparent introspection assumptions a long way. So, um, so we're going to lead to an infinite hierarchy. Uh, should we be happy with this? I mean, it, it naively seems to me that if whenever an instance of excluded middle leads with premises I'm completely happy with to the conclusion that I'm a ham sandwich, that then I should reject its use in argument in the same way. I mean, I, there is this alternative view uh, that all, all, all good instances of excluded middle are good in the same way, but each bad instance is bad in its own distinctive way. Um, and I don't really know how to argue against that. I suspect that uh, this is what Kai would want to conclude. Um, but. Um, um, it, it, it would be nice if we could find a way to avoid this con conclusion, and I don't know if we can. Uh, well, we can if we reject some of his tran transparency assumptions, but, but uh, let's not go there yet. 
Okay, so let me um, go back to the first aspect of his puzzle, which is the one that he mostly talks about. Um, um, so this is the puzzle about what our creedal state in the chi ascendant should be, uh, granting chi's assumption that excluded middle was to blame. And so let's first look at other cases where excluded middle uh, might plausibly be thought suspect and, and ask what our creedal state should be in those cases. Um, uh, well, let me see that. Um, so let's ask what credence should we have towards uh, liar sentences. And here, here, here um, let's see, I've, I've actually given you, you an example of a empirical liar sentence. And the answer to what our credence should be in that is actually somewhat complicated um, because it doesn't depend merely on its being a liar sentence. It, it depends on what our credences are that it is a liar sentence. Um, so it, it isn't hard to see that once you, once you get the credences for the non-empirical liar sentences, it's pretty clear what the credences in the empirical liar sentences should be, at least to first approximation. Um, so let's, let's look at the non-empirical liar sentences. First, these are ones where the rules of the language determine that the denotation of the term uh, is the sentence itself. And um, um, I, uh, as I said, I think that once we know what the credences in them are, the credences in, in, in the other should be clear. Um, so let lambda zero be a non-empirical liar sentence. Um, Let's see. I think I'm going to skip this thing about the classical resolutions. Um, let me just say that um, it's an, an essential feature of the of the fully classical resolutions that 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 a, a distinction has to be made between credence uh, our 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 credence in a sentence or proposition and our our credence in the truth of the sentence or the proposition, which strikes many people as absurd. Um, um, okay, sorry. Okay, so um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to focus on the restricting excluded middle version of non-classicality. Um, and um, so when excluded middle is suspended um, for any domain, one can obviously not use classical point value credences because one of the laws of them is that our credence of any instance of excluded middle is one. Um, so what should we do instead? Well, one alternative is to use closed intervals of real numbers. The lower en end point of the interval would be called the lower degree of belief and the upper end point, the upper degree of belief. Uh, point values are, of course, just the special case where the lower and the upper coincide. Um, now, you could use something richer and there might be reasons to do so. I mean, measures on the interval zero, one, or something like that. But I don't really think those are likely to change the basic issues of the, of the paradox, so I'm going, going to skip that. Okay, so if we use interval value credences, how should we treat negation? Um, if, if our credence in A is the interval from C to D, what should our Credence in not A, B, and I think 
an overwhelmingly plausible answer is that it should be the interval from 1 minus d to 1 minus c. So that's the interval of the same breadth, but it just kind of flipped and uh, shifted as appropriate. Um, and so if we assume this, then the function that assigns lower degree of belief to every proposition determines the function that assigns uh, upper degree of belief. Uh, globally, the upper degrees of belief are redundant. So, uh, so, so they're not redundant lo locally in that if you know the lower degree of, degree of belief in A, you don't know the upper degree of belief. But if you know the lower degree of, degree of belief in both A and in not A, then you know the upper degrees of belief in both of them as well. Um, so the lower degrees of belief that this function assigns will be point valued, but they won't obey the usual probabilistic laws uh, in that the lower degrees of belief in A and not A will often add it to less than one. Um, um, it, so talk of interval values and sub additive point values are just no, notational variants. Uh, surprisingly, this is a point that a bunch of people have missed um, in, 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 in giving our arguments against the subadditive approach. Anyway, um, is there an argument for moving from classical point-valued credences to interval-valued credences or something at least as rich when we restrict excluded middle? Uh, the answer depends a little bit on the particular way in which you want to develop the alternative logic. Um, I'm, 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 I'm going to skip this, except to say that Kai, um, Kai like me, advocates a particular kind of um, uh, non-classical logic, which I've called here the KLMP logic um, for cleaning Lukashevitz with Moda's exponents. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to skip the details here, but I claim, and, 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 and we can talk about this if, 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 if people are skeptical, but I claim there's a pretty thorough, pretty thoroughly convincing argument that if this is the kind of logic you want to use, then interval valued credences are appropriate. So let me skip all this. Um, okay. So let's apply it to Kai's puzzle. Um, so Kai sentence gamma, which is equivalent to the claim that Allo doesn't believe it. So Kai's basic assumption is that in combination with clearly acceptable assumptions about introspective transparency and so forth, excluded middle for gamma leads to absurdity. If that's so, and if the part that I just skipped is correct, um, mm. then, uh, then Al's and our credence in it, it, it ought to be the unit interval from zero to one. And I'm happy with that for the liar sentence. And one of Kai's con con conclusions is that the, the sentence gamma is just like the liar sentence. So, uh, so it seems I should be happy with this. But, but um, and, and it also would seem to vindicate Kai's indeterminacy claim on one natural sense of indeterminacy, namely, The view is that our credence in this sentence should be as far from being point valued as possible. It should be, it should have the maximum spread. And I think that's a natural way to understand what it is for our credence to be indeterminate. As we'll see, it's actually not the way that 
Kai understands it. And also, independently of that, there is a problem, which is that we originally stated the problematic Kai sentence in terms of non-numerical belief, but suppose we put it numerically, so we set some high threshold t uh, and to allow for interval values, we interpret belief as having your lower degree of belief be at least t. Um, and if you read the chi sentence in, in, in this way, it doesn't affect derivation of an absurdity from gamma or not gamma. But, um, but we have a problem because the, the argument which I skipped um, would yield that RNL's credence in gamma should be the entire unit interval. Uh, and the lower bound of that is zero, and zero is well below the threshold. Uh, so uh, Al doesn't believe gamma, but that's just gamma, and we're back to ab absurdity. So I hope you're getting the sense that I started with, that there is something genuinely puzzling about these cases. Um, now, the last thing might not be a problem for Kai because, as I said, he doesn't actually explain indeterminacy in this way. Instead, he takes over a reading of determinacy from the literature on the semantic paradoxes. Uh, and what I'm going to do in the rest of the talk is, <laughs> let's see. I, I guess for most of the rest of the talk, I will argue that this is a dead end for his purposes. Um, um, and, and then I'll come back to whether an extension of the interval value credence idea might help. I don't have any promises here. And then uh, look briefly at whether we do better to question its basic assumptions. Actually, you know what? Maybe I, instead of going on with the rest of the talk now, I should, I mean, what about pausing and dealing with questions now? And then if the questions run out, then I will go back and do some of the rest of the talk. So it's natural to connect up rejection uh, 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 restrictions on excluded middle with some kind of notion of indeterminacy, and that's what Kai does. And, and the question is how to understand it. And what Kai does is take over um, an approach to indeterminacy that I used in connection with the liar paradox and, 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 and related paradox, and I bring it over here. Um, so I introduced a specific operator, which I called D, and, and said was a, a determinateness of operator. Actually, I, I now actually slightly regret that I used that term, but, um, well, I guess we'll see why in a, a minute. Um, uh, so it was actually a defined connective, but that doesn't matter too much at the moment. And it, it obeys two principles. First of all, um, uh, D of A entails A in a very strong sense. That, that is the, the, the conditional from D of A to A is valid. And also, and this is crucial, the assumption that it's indeterminate whether A, in other words, not DA and not D, not A, that assumption is inconsistent with excluded middle in the sense that that assumption together with excluded middle leads to uh, any absurd conclusion you like, like on the ham sandwich, it was my earlier example. Um, so I'll call these two things together the 
determinacy role of the D operator. And um, so I, I mentioned before that if you want to say what's wrong with certain instances of excluded middle, you can't do it by saying that they aren't true. Um, but there are some workarounds, and one of them, uh, uh, one that isn't always available, but, it, but sometimes is, is saying that neither of the disjuncts is determinately true. Um, but in order for that to work, it's crucial that the second aspect of the determinacy role holds. Um, uh, so <coughs> what we want is to say what's wrong with certain instances of excluded middle, and if we say they're not determinate, that only works if that assertion precludes the assumption of excluded middle. Uh, so that's why, why this R2 was so crucial. Um, um, so actually, here, here's a simpler thing from which R2 follows. Um, now, once you have an operator D, you can iterate it. You can get DD and DDD and so forth. You can actually uh, iterate this into the trend. It's finite for a long way. Um, I won't go through the details about that. But, um, um, and a, an important feature of the D operator in, 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 as, as d defined in these logics is that all these iterations are distinct. Um, and another is that all these iterations have both features of the determinacy role. So I mean, that it has, has the first one is obvious, because we get stronger and stronger things at each stage. Uh, that, that it has the second one isn't quite as obvious, but it is true. And so that means, in a sense, that each of these iterations of D is just as good a candidate. In fact, since, since each is stronger than the previous one, it actually makes a better candidate than the previous one. So what we really have, I would now say, is a sequence of better and better candidates for what determinacy comes to. Um, I have a transfinite finite sequence of stronger and stronger operators that are intuitively, uh, as I hear about, e equally good, but actually better and better. Uh, candidates for explicating whatever intuitive notion of determinateness we have. And so one might well think that the real notion of determinateness should be D of alpha for all alpha. But there are technical reasons why you can't even make sense of this. Um, it, it simply isn't, it's not just that it's undefinable but in, in the language. It's a pseudo concept. Trust me. <laughs> um, but even if you don't trust me, uh, Notice that there's no obvious reason why such a transfinite conjunction would be strong enough that whenever A or not A isn't valid, um, uh, some iteration of uh, uh, something of the form not, not D alpha A and not D alpha not A is. Um, so we, even if you don't trust me, there's no reason to think that we have a notion of indeterminacy that captures the idea of failure of excluded middle. So, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll get to the morals for Kai in a moment, but, but um, um, an illustration of this 
in the case of, of, the, of the semantic paradoxes, the liar-like paradoxes, is that once you have the D operator in its iterations, you can introduce a whole sequence of liar-like sentences, in particular non-empirical ones where lambda sub alpha is, is equivalent to uh, the claim that it itself is not, is not d to the alpha true. And um, so you might think at first that these would lead to paradox, but, but it's, uh, it's, uh, 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 um, it, it's easy to show that in fact they don't. Uh, the argument to paradox always requires excluded middle uh, um, in the form of the assumption that uh, lambda sub alpha is either d alpha true or not d alpha true. So that has to be rejected. Um, um, of course, it can't be rejected by saying that it's disjuncts aren't d to the alpha true. At best, we can only say that they aren't d to the alpha plus one true. Um, so there's a very important moral of all of this, which is that basically indeterminacy in the sense of d is really a sideshow to this in, in entire issue. Because on, on any clear way of explaining indeterminacy in terms of d, the problem common to the um, lambda sub alpha sentences isn't indeterminacy. It's, it's the inability to use excluded middle in argument. Um, so the common problem is that the assumption of excluded middle for these sentences leads to absurdities like the I'm a ham sandwich given a modest background of clearly acceptable assumptions. Uh, in, in other words, if the sentences are all in some sense indeterminate, it's not in the sense of D or any of its iterations um, or, or, or in terms of some kind of generalization of iterations, which doesn't even make sense and, and wouldn't be enough even if it did. Um, so if our concern is just these sentences, um, the, the suggestion that indeterminacy is, 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 is best explained in terms of our creedal states being the entire unit interval works perfectly well. Um, and, um, but it doesn't, it doesn't work for all the sentences in the analogous chi hierarchy. Um, so, as I said, his favorite response to his belief puzzle blames it on excluded middle, uh, and, and, and he often passes from this to saying it's indeterminate whether uh, b, b gamma, and he then says that he's using indeterminate in the sense of d, and, and what I've, uh, um, uh, but if he were, then the assumption of indeterminacy simply, indeterminacy simply wouldn't be justified. Uh, nor would it for any other d, d to the alpha. Um, so he needs a, another sense, and as I said, a, a, a sense that looks more promising um, is the non-point-valued credences, but uh, as, as mentioned, they, they are there they're a bit problematic too in that they lead to this kind of revenge paradox. Um, so I think the slides here got a little disorganized. I, I, uh, um, 
So I think I figured out something after I did them. Um, so, at least for this as so I, 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 I mentioned that there are actually two aspects of Kai's puzzle. One which he barely talks about is, um, is um, uh, 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 to explain what goes on, what goes wrong with the reasoning for the paradox. And unless we're willing to stratify the idea of rejection for the use in our argument, there, there, there looks like a, uh, a real problem there. Um, the other one is, is, the, is this thing about the, what the nature of the creedal state is. And, and um, um, So, in, in, in saying in answer to a previous question, that the, the thing about this paradox of degrees of belief was really a revenge problem. Uh, I think I've actually meant to concede that actually, as far as the original Kai puzzle goes, Actually, there isn't a problem, as far as I can see, with it, with saying that the chi sentence is indeterminate, uh, um, in the sense that our our credence in it should be uh, uh, the, the entire unit interval. But it does raise um, but but it, it doesn't handle all the cases. And, and, and uh, sorry, I, I skipped the relevant slide. But in analogy with this hierarchy of, of liar sentences, there is also going to be a hierarchy of chi sentences. Um, um, and, uh, but for them, you clearly cannot use the modeling in terms of, of the entire unit interval. So one of the things that I've, I, I, I did start to explore was the idea of using that as the model for the base case that it includes the chi sentence and using more complicated um, creedal states for the uh, uh, for the uh, sentences higher up in, in the chi, in the hierarchy of chi sentences, I mean, sentences that say, I don't determinately believe the sentence, I don't determinately, determinately believe the sentence, and so forth. Anyway, uh, maybe I, I should just conclude by saying, I was able to make this work for finite levels in the hierarchy, but I, I've not been able to extend it into the transfinite. But since the hierarchies do extend into the transfinite, that really isn't a, an ultimately satisfactory solution. Um, okay, let me in, end it there, and we still have five minutes more for questions.